Okay. I always start talking about something good and then I forget to record. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, we all have this where you're like when you suddenly explode about something and they go, wow, I didn't realize I was still carrying that around. Like something that happened years ago, uh, you know, maybe a distress with your parents or maybe uh, you've had building anger over the fact that whenever you and your best friend meet, your best friend is always late by 10 to 30 minutes and you're always left hanging or like we, we have these things that sometimes trigger or um, what is it? Uh, my chiropractor, when um, Dr. Kim Mazinski, who's just up with 29, not too far. She's amazing. She says it doesn't do any good to do like the bone cracking chiropractic because it's tension in the muscles that cause bones to shift out of place. So what you do is you relax the muscles and then you gently shift the bones into alignment. Mm -hmm. Hi, come on in. We're just starting. And then you allow the bones to develop a new muscle memory of, oh, this is where we want to be. The main reason bones shift out of place or muscles tense up and cause bones to shift out is because you have an emotional distress or a memory of a physical injury that puts them there. So she goes in and within five minutes, she's discovered some issue that you don't even remember. Like she was working on me on a, on a neck injury or a neck pain that was causing my, me to like lose the curve in my, the spine in my neck. And she, within five minutes, brought up a memory of when I was a little girl and my brother would chase, he'd get like a jar and fill it with daddy long legs, like a big old mayonnaise jar. And he'd go, I've got the spiders and he would torture me, chasing me around until he would like hold me down, sitting on my chest with my arms pinned under him and he dropped the spiders on my face one at a time. I know. Talk about guaranteed lifelong arachnophobia. <laughs> Years of therapy spent dealing with that. But, uh, and if I would scream, you know, they'd go right in my mouth. So this was like very traumatic. But within five minutes, Kim had located all the cause of my neck problems came from this. And she released, <laughs> you know, years of therapy on how arachnophobic I was, but never really thinking about the cause that much. Within five minutes, she released some deep tension in my muscle. And I was so sobbing and screaming on her table, just like racking with sobs. She did some subtle adjustments, some energy healing. My neck has been great ever since. And I'm not afraid of spiders. So, and I'm not mad at my brother. Like it, it all released. So if that response is that strong from, you know, a big brother torturing his little sister a little bit, Imagine when we have traumas from past lives and how they can stick with us and affect our daily life. You know, they, they can impact like whether or not you get a good job. If you find a life mate who values you, you know, your, your uh, relationship with yourself. This is a really, really big deal. And the Akashic Records can help us with all of this. Um, oh, that's it. The other day, um, I I think it was Friday. I think I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this when we were at the Czar event. Um, I got a call from this elderly shamanist, and she said, there's a healing happening now, and you need to be part of it now. And I said, um, oh, okay, do you want me to hop in my car or what? And she's like, no, it's happening now sit down somewhere and we're going to jump in. And she's one of those shamanesses who's part of like global healing of the planet, caregiving of the planet. And so I sat on the bench in my garden and I'm on my cell phone on my bench in my garden. And she said, okay, are you ready? Um, you know, someone, she said, I was called to call you for a reason. You know, someone who, um, 
is not able to be their whole self because of childhood trauma and lives in a life that has uh, distress and does not achieve what they can. I said, yes, I, I do know one very specific person. And she said, think about this person, now energetically connect with me. And then we connected with these shamanesses and shamans, there were some men on it too, globally. It was like happening in the moment. And there was a time when the planet provided energy at this moment that everyone was able to tap in. And it was the most extraordinary thing. I saw that in the sky, <laughs> just sitting on the bench looking at the sky, I saw how when, especially when we're small, when we're young and we're in development, there are lines of energy that can connect us to all of our physical ancestors, our genetic ancestors of this life. And when joyous things happen to you, this energy reaches out and these ancestors, they're all like watching over us. They're watching over us and they're able to connect in and then support you with maintaining this wonderful, loving energy. But when you send out energy of pain and distress, if you've had like an abusive or unhappy childhood, this energy connects out and it connects with your genetic ancestors who are maybe not so nice, the ones who live in dark energy. And then they connect with you and they want to carry, they, you're connected with them for the rest of your life. Uh, so when you get older and you're like, you know what? So I had a terrible childhood, you know, or whatever happened, or so I was just always depressed, or so I had problems with my weight, or whatever it is. I'm not going to be that person anymore. I'm not going to let something that happened to me when I was a kid impact who I am as an adult. I'm going to change. But you have all those lines of energy connected. And if your childhood was overall unpleasant, then you're going to overall have unpleasant lines of energy and any effort to change it's like you're a fly in a spider web you send energy and they're like ah oh, and they go and they like wrap you in a cocoon and suck your life force out of you so every effort to change gets killed basically now if your childhood like most of us it's some good some bad some you know trauma some pleasant whatever so you can subtly shift you can use the energy of your ancestors that look upon you with love and support to strengthen that. And then the negative connections release. And so I was thinking about the Prana Shakti with the Guruji and he, how he was talking about how to heal from your ancestors requires a great deal of energy if you're connected to negative ancestors. In the whole Prana Shakti Hindu thing, it's like really complicated. And with this one, it was very simple. We were just releasing and sending love, sending love to everyone, an overwhelming washing of love. And the craziest thing happened. A few days later, I had a meeting with the person who had come to my mind. And this person said to me, you won't believe what happened. I just had an epiphany a few days ago. We are meant to live our life filled with joy. We're put on this planet to be filled with joy. And bad things happen. Horrible things happen, but you're still expected to live and be a joyous person. I used to think the best I could get was contentment. Contentment was my goal. And now I realize contentment is something that you can drag down the misery with like a pebble, whacking it can send it down to misery. I want joy. I want full out nonstop joy. And that's who I'm going to be from now on. And I went, this is great. This is absolutely great that we made this transformation and, you know, and you ever wonder, is it real, you know, or was I just sitting on my back porch hallucinating with some old lady on the phone? Like, <laughs> you know, right? It was wonderful for me to get this affirmation. Um, there was not time for me to tell my, this person what I had done and see if there, if any connection resonated. Um, but when you think about this in our past life, like suppose I had a past life that was awful. So that child had all these lines of energy connected to ancestors. Then my next life comes along and I have all this unresolved stuff 
that slides along as well. Then my next life, it's going to be much harder because I've got all that negative energy. I have to do a lot of healing and I don't even know there's anything wrong because maybe I have a pretty happy-go-lucky life this time. Maybe I have great parents and no problems. So I actually have a lot of happy memories in this life, yet there's the residue of the negativity of the last life. So this is one of the things we're going to think about as we work on our Akashic Records uh, research going forward on how we can heal past lives and give ourselves a greater time in this life. If you have time in your life where um, you feel almost like there's a glass ceiling that stops you, or you feel like you get to a certain point in your life and bungee cords pull you back, or something goes right for everyone else and you're left there going, wait, it worked for these five people standing around me and did not work for me. What's up with that? Going into the Akashic Records can help to uh, figure this out and resolve it, clear out any issues, and then you have a brighter, bolder future ahead of you. One of the fun things to remember about the Akashic Records is um, time is not linear. And for some reason, my PowerPoint presentation is not showing on the TV with this laptop. So I'll have to switch laptops and this one's not good at recording. So we may once again, I'll, I'll see if I can get it to record the presentation. Once again, technology is awkward for me, so I'll do a little bumbling at a certain point. Um, but time is not linear in the Akashic Records. So while we can heal past lives, it's not just for this life. We can actually heal past lives for past lives. Um, I have not really been able to go and make like technical changes to past lives. But I did have one past life that was very painful. And um, I was able to heal that past life, not only in the afterlife, like the me who was this fellow who had such an awful life, not only heal him for after the life, but we're able to go back and put healing within that life so the life was less awful for him than it had been when he lived it. So if I was able to go back in time and help with the past life, just remember we have future lives and we can reach out to our future lives because to our future lives were the past lives. So remember that it's not just where I am at this moment. You are part of a greater being and um, time is not linear. So we get to really run rampant and play in it. And I know. <laughs> Does anyone have questions so far before I... Okay, I'm going to switch 